the Mario. Swing your arms from side to side. Come on, it's time to go. Do the Mario. Take one step and then again. Let's do the Mario all together now. You got it. It's the Mario. Do the Mario. Swing your arms from side to side. Come on, it's time to go. Do the Mario. Take one step. And then again, let's do the Mario all together now. Come on now, just like that. Hey everyone, Wadler D. We're back for a new Let's Play. And this is Doom the Golden Souls 2. Technically a Doom 2 conversion that mario fies Doom 2. It's kind of incredible. More to the point, description will have all the information you need and the referenced information. The stuff that I used to help me get from point to point B in this. And yes, AI is going to be helping me. Thank you, Chop Liver, for existing. But this is a very interesting project by Bat Andy, and he's done a freaking good enough job to do three of these things. The third one is kind of in progress, but... It's a pretty interesting experience. The first one is kind of more like Mario 64, and the second one is kind of more Mario World. And if you're seeing this correctly, yes, I am setting up my controls to use a freaking controller. I am regretting every bit of this decision, but I can, at least will show you that this game is definitely possible with a controller, with some adjustments here and there. And I'm kind of excited to show this off because this is kind of like an amalgamation of all the things I've done on this channel. I don't know why Doom Guy's glitching out there, but before you dive right into this, if you're not comfortable with FPS platforming, highly recommend you do the first two options just for your sanity's sake. And it all begins with Doom Land. Doom guy, having kicked so much demon ass for 30 years, has decided, you know what, let's just retire, live on this nice plot of land, and do it with my favorite bunny, Daisy. Doom guy did not know you were a tea guy, but you know what, it's better than coffee in my book, so have it. Doom guy, you did deal with the demon problem, right? Right? Wrong. <laughs> so, Doom Guy, you basically failed to kill the cyber demon he took your bunny and then he left you a lovely note what are you gonna do about this buddy that's a good start but before we head out let's get our trusty sidearm it's going to help you it's not a magnum but it does do things that kill things so by all means pick that up Oh, Doom Guy, you have a love interest in your life? Cool. And I do love what Bat Andy did with all the Doom cute stuff, like a Switch. I was not expecting that. And more importantly, nice references to old times. And some references I still don't get to this day. Like this trophy here, Dwango's Death Match Champion. Gotta figure that out. And I love that Bruiser Brother mount. But here's my question, Doom Guy. Do you have homeowner's insurance? Because this hole in the wall is somehow kind of awkward, like the debris being on the outside when. Never mind, I'm not going to talk about game logic. And this overworld is much what you would expect from a Super Mario World esque situation. And it does have a shop, so you're going to know what to do with those coins. But let's talk about green. This is Cliffs. What the heck? Bat Andy. This is Cliffs. No planes. So yeah, we got green planes as our first level, and we are getting introduced to this asshole trying to kill me, but also imps. Dooms Goomba. 
But Green Plains is a great place to start because it introduces you to your primary pickups like coins, hearts, ammunition. You definitely want to pick these things up because they're going to help you buy stuff as you already know. But once you're done exploring, getting used to controls, you should start getting used to how the level design kind of works. Right now you're surrounded by instant death. But this stretch here is kind of easy going. It's more about just jumping up hills to make sure you kill the enemies along the way. And this guy, the killer plant, I'm guessing is like a Katui, but n thankfully not as annoying. All you just need to consider is like it's a slower, maybe more dangerous imp. And once you keep that in mind and start popping them full of bullets, they're not a problem. They are definitely not any problem. And honestly, I say that this first level also introduces these enemies pretty well, like demons, pinky demons. You are not going to have any issues with them because your mobility is so much better. The fact that you can jump means that you could just jump over them if they corner you and they kind of still go down like flies real easy. Now, take a look at this checkpoint flag. Checkpoint! Then take a look at your armor. It went up by 25, and this is one of two ways where you can get armor in this game. The other way is by paying a lot of money for it, and it sucks, but it's there. Oh shit, that's... We're picking that up immediately because I see a Kako Demon and all these shells need to go right into its ugly ass face. Because honestly, Kako Demons are going to be one of the main threats in this level you're going to see. So watch your back. And of course we have this guy, the Red Plant. Very creative name, but not too threatening if they can't hit you. But be careful, those fireballs can be deceptive with their range. Also, if you're very observant, you can find yourself big-ass coins. Big-ass coins give you big-ass rewards, because if you find enough of them, you can get some really good stuff. But you have to, like, sometimes risk your life. And, of course, the formula for these levels kind of goes like this. Doom Guy usually runs into a situation where he doesn't know how to wall jump or hit things below. So he has to do it his way, which is basically scouring the lands, killing everything that's in his way to find a switch of some sort, because that's usually how Doom works, right? Not exactly, but in this case, you're going to be seeing it quite a bit. Thankfully, this is a pretty easy level, and all you just need to know is that oh, I didn't explore this area all that much. I mean, there's enemies here. Why not clear the plains and move on? And I highly recommend you kind of consider spreading out the wealth of ammo because you might get in a situation where you remind yourself of episode 3 of Doom where you had to do this with the same freaking pistol. Yeah, there's the shotgun shells. That would have helped. And there are some points where I'm like, you know what? You know what's going to happen here. Let's do this thing where we just completely and utterly speed through the section because honestly you do not need to see me snipe a bunch of M's with my pistol because I mean the switch is right here however before we go back we gotta talk about this section and what Bad Andy really likes doing sometimes and that's challenge the player with precision platforming this is where the levels can get pretty dicey and chase cam can help you out because it does give you like a point of reference but Man, Bad Andy, you really are throwing, like, the kitchen sink at me here. So just be careful when you're using the chase cam, because sometimes it might screw with you with the camera angle, just like Super Mario 64. Thanks a lot. I'm glad we're getting that. And, of course, once you hit that switch, boom. Platform decides to go down, and, of course... Checkpoint! Thanks, game. And... This is usually how the levels work out. You have two checkpoints, you have usually an obstacle or two, and you just have to find your way around them. 
but don't think it's going to be this simple for too long because the levels start getting more complex and definitely longer because this is probably one of the shortest levels in the game like you have 40 enemies that's not a whole lot considering what you're going to be dealing with later on and the enemy placement in this level is pretty la -de da like oh demons on a cliff they're, they're dead because they can't reach you and of course, we had a couple Kaku Demons, probably the most dangerous enemy in the le this level, but that's going to ch easily change at some point, because then you're going to start meeting more enemies and new enemies at that, which you'll be surprised how many new enemies you'll be seeing, because it's quite a treat. It's one of the best things about this this total conversion, because you'll have, like, freaking some very Mario-themed enemies and some other things to look forward to, but... For now, we just got the plant fair and, of course, a couple Doom mainstays. But once you get to this point of the first level, you see this nice door with the green exit sign. And that means you can breathe easy, everything's A-OK. -okay, but be sure to look around before you go and exit the stage, because if you happen to miss anything, you're going to have to go through the whole stage. Good news everything's going to be dead, so you don't have to kill it again. Sorry, had to give Super Mario World its due. And once you beat a level, you get a nice little blue version of that demonic symbol on the ground. And you kind of get some choices here. Let's check what this one's up. Yeah, we'll talk about that one another day, because... Yeah, that level's kind of rough. So, Doomland Capitalism. Crash, that's kind of cute. Like, just change the vowel and it might be very accurate. Too bad Doom Guy is not a com conversationalist. But we do have a lot of good options here. And if you have the money and are willing to spend it, green armor, 99% of the time. Just, oh. We gotta talk about this. Ah, damn. 15 coins Jesus yeah that's gonna be my goal here is to get that that pistol in my hands and kick some ass with it bad Andy this isn't a cave yet but it does have water and water cave is definitely a step up from the last level certainly a little bit more death surrounding me at the moment and if you're thinking oh god is this gonna be like the level design all the time no, I feel like this is like one of Bat Andy's earlier levels because it kind of follows this particular mindset where it's just like, hey, look at all this instant deaths around you. Also, this is where you start getting introduced to ambushes. Like, I like to call this uh, back tap cliffs because once you start falling down, you're going to have an enemy hitting you in the back with a projectile or two. But if you know which one has the more dangerous enemy, you can kill that one first and just deal with the imp scratching your back. And then, of course, we have everyone's favorite flying eyeball. He'll die soon enough, but damn, he is hard. Freaking heck, man. Yeah, kill. Be, just be careful taking damage here, because this level is definitely harder than the last one. Just because not so much the instant death parts, it's more... I would love to pick that up, by the way. It's more of the enemy placement and how crafty it is, like, compared to the first level, where you have demons around corners and you have to kind of consider your footing. Otherwise, you might take a tumble and die. Get the hell out of here. I we'll talk more about him when he's alive a little bit longer, but that enemy I hate. That big coin, we're going to try to do this. We're going to jump forward, and then we'll pull back right before we go and plummet to our deaths. Otherwise, yeah, lots of problems. Okay, thank God. But also be careful when you're trying to make this next jump because it is a bit... Oh, see what I mean? You could just, like, take one step too far and you might fall straight into oblivion. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to just speed through this platforming because you already know what's happening. There's nothing trying to kill me. I just want to show off what's in that pool of water over there, because plenty of coins, plenty of money. And then we actually reach the water cave and get introduced to a damn good Super Mario World 2 theme. Freaking love that. And I kind of like the aesthetics of this place. It certainly feels more... It feels like a cave, 
at the very least, and I do like the waterfalls, but you also can introduce the enemy placement here, because it's quite crafty. Especially when you have this asshole shooting you. This is the Red Sniffet. Sniping extraordinaire. I highly recommend you kill them. They thankfully do not have hit scan, but their pellets sneak through situations that you won't expect because they're just not a burning red fireball. It's just this black pellet that just comes towards you and it can hit you quite a damn bit. I've had it happen to me more than a couple of times and I that's why I hate these enemies so much. And it's just like that in the original Super Mario Brothers 2. When having you been killed by a damn sniffet, you just mind your own business and this bullet just streaks across the freaking sky and hits you in the back of the head and kills you and Mario. Jack point! Now we get to this point, and I'd say this is where the water part actually starts. A little bit after this platforming section, and I do appreciate the aesthetics here. It's definitely a nice little blend of kind of greenery mixed with some earth style going on here and the platforms look kind of nice oh no please stop and then you're gonna see how this guy can wreck you so quickly if you happen to give him a chance because those bullets that guy almost fell on top of me what the hell all right let's get this guy yep shotgun if you can but don't miss for the love of god do not miss then we talk about aquatics 101 very important information here, because if you do what I'm doing, you'll be fine except for one thing. Watch yourself, because enemies are above, below, and sometimes in your face. Don't do this, by the way, because here you have infinite air. You don't have to worry about dying. And this enemy, you're going to probably come to hate him. That thing we'll talk about later. It's kind of like an item inventory thing. And, oh my god, can you just not be in my life? So, water is kind of interesting in this. And it kind of begs the question, like, how many games, like, first-person series you know that have, like, water in it? And how many times you find it to be, this is my favorite section of the game? Very rarely that's going to be that. Because uh, water sections, as you can expect, in most games, are gonna suck. Unless there's some fun mechanic behind it, like the cases of running over it. That's fun as hell, because you don't have to be in it. And of course, the main issue of water in this is that enemies can be incredibly sneaky. And, and since you have to look above and below you, you just might get surprised and snuck up on. This is a fun little checkpoint, or choke point, I should say, because this is a spot where you have to deal with two sniffets sniping you while you're trying to get out of this pool. But this is why I was showing threat levels, because once you start identifying the enemies that are threatening, and then realize, oh wow, this game is kind of stuck trying to get on geometry, and these imps are too damn slow, so if you take care of the sniffets that are trying to snipe you from just exiting the pool, boom. That room becomes much easier, and you can keep more of your light. Oh no. Not one, but two obstacles. Guess what that means? Two watering holes, man. So that means we're going to have to find two switches today. Ugh. That Andy, we need to talk about this whole water switching, or this switcheroo thing. I mean, it's not bad, but... Of course, you have to deal with more of, of my favorite water enemy right now. There's going to be worse ones coming up. Oh, damn it. Yeah, that guy can... That attack we haven't seen, but it can do that sometimes. And the good news is that it's a much slower attack. But I can't imagine it going well for anybody getting hit by all of those projectiles at once. So try to keep your body moving left and right when you're underwater fighting those guys. And if you don't have that option, you can always take advantage of cliffs because your gun usually has hit scan and their projectiles are pretty bulky. So as long as you keep that in mind, you won't be too concerned about moments where you have to shoot around a cliff because you're going to have the advantage at that point. I will say that this water level 
is a nice introduction to what you will see a lot more of because uh bad andy definitely enjoys the underwater goodness see told you we're not done yet still more water explorer and this is pretty much like a cooldown from all the stuff that we've been dealing with. Like, the climax of this level is basically back there. But you still have some enemy presence. And I do have to ask the question. Since we're I'm on the subject with all this water and the fact that... After we kill this son of a bitch right here, let's take him out. I'm so sick of you guys already. We haven't even gotten to the worst of the snippets. Yeah, there's more snippets. And they're even more annoying than the guy that just shoots one bullet across the screen. But water levels in first-person shooters. Can you name any of your favorites in, at all? Like, which one really stood out and just wowed you? Because I don't think... I can't think of too many. I think the closest thing that comes to mind when I'm thinking of water levels in a first-person shooter or just water sections is Torok. And I do have that Torok feel from this sometimes. Like, usually it's kind of hard to see underwater, but thank God your guns actually work underwater. Speaking of which, Redfish, the most useless enemy I've ever seen. You can maybe challenge yourself to punt by punching it, but they usually will not be a threat. So once we hit the two switches down here, the best object, or like the best thing to do is just basically get to the exit. And definitely do the switch thing before doing all this, because you're going to find yourself wasting a lot of time and going back down there anyway. Oh, well, speak of the devil. One nice thing is that there is a big-ass coin down here. But how are you liking these levels so far? Like, I can definitely say that another kind of platformer in a, set in the Doom engine, like Sonic Robo Blast 2, has... I'll definitely superior level design in terms of like aesthetics and whatnot. But I do appreciate that Doom Guy actually gets the chance to do the Mario. And I'm kind of looking forward to showing off more the good, the bad, the ugly. And of course, I need to do my nice perimeter check real quick. And I certainly will say that it's going to get more interesting and a lot more creative and more pleasant looking too unfortunately i don't have too much more to show for this video but i do have one way to cap off these videos at the end and that's to show off how to get the rest of the big coins because those are very important for the the big rewards i was talking about so let's go back to green plains and yes, ignore the living hell of my weapon right now, because it's not something that you're going to find just yet. It's a cool weapon, but we can't use it yet. So all you just have to do is jump on the scenery and drop in this hole and get a very nice Zelda sound effect reference. And then this one is actually one of the harder ones to find, because you actually have to use your map. And you just have to kind of look around the wall here and you see that there's like a little a cove where you just have to look around the, the shielding and then you can see the hole in the wall. Well, with that all out of the way, I really hope you enjoyed this video and that you'll join me for future installments of Doom the Golden Souls 2. And Bat Andy, thank you very much for creating this thing. It's pretty damn fun. So next time, we'll be diving into one of my least favorite levels of the first world. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and adios.